Hi everyone, I'm Chrissy B, and you've just been watching my favourite series, The Hit, Moses and the Ten Commandments, which airs every weekday at 9pm. But you can also catch the repeats every day at 12pm. But now it's time to welcome you to The Chrissy B Show, the UK's only programme dedicated to mental health and well-being. So March is National Bed Month, which aims to raise awareness of how important a good comfortable bed is in helping to achieve a good night's sleep. But on today's show, all about health and well-being, we'll be exploring a lot more than just your mattress, with lots of hints and tips on how to sleep better. But just for the record, here are some things you should know about your bed. According to the Sleep Council, if your mattress is unsupportive, it will encourage a poor sleeping posture, which prevents you from good sleep. If you regularly wake up with aches and pains, it's probably time to get it changed. So the Sleep Council have suggested four things to consider when selecting the best bed for you. Number one, always put quality above price. There are some perfectly acceptable low price mattresses available, but when it comes to your bed, spend as much as you can actually afford. Number two, the right support is crucial. If your bed is too hard or soft, it will be uncomfortable and unsupportive. Your mattress should be firm enough to support your spine in the correct alignment while conforming to your body's contours. Number three, always try before you buy. Lay down on each bed that you're seriously considering, spending a good 10 to 15 minutes realizing its comfort and support levels. And they also say to try several different positions. So we all move about 40 to 60 times per night. And remember that if two people will be sleeping on this mattress, test it out together, that might be fun. And number four, avoid waiting until your bed has worn out completely. Research shows that sleeping on an uncomfortable mattress can rob you of up to one hour sleep per night, which adds up to a full night's sleep over the course of a week. So you should consider changing your bed after seven years. So thanks very much for those tips from the Sleep Council. So what's coming up on today's show? Our new resident guest, Joe Kellett, is back. Now, Joe is a tisserand aromatherapy expert and also the founder of From the Seed. And she'll be speaking about how to aid sleep through the use of essential oils. Then it's on to Dr. Audrey Tang in this week's Psychology Matters segment, discussing some psychological issues that could be keeping you up at night. We then speak to news correspondent Helena Shard in this week's A Helping of Happy, which brings positive news to your screens and also featuring our fabulous cake of the week, which is a lovely rainbow cake courtesy of Vida Bakery. And we also feature our visit to the Brixton Soup Kitchen to see the great work they are doing to help homeless people who spend many a sleepless nights on the streets. Dr. Rob Hicks will be giving us his top tips on how to get a good night's sleep and beauty expert Sani Soma will be showing us a few tricks to hide a tired face. And we also go to Hannah Rich's kitchen for a recipe that helps to reduce anxiety and aid better sleep. And we also have another workout with Natalia Katoska because exercise also helps us drift off better. So let's get started with our aromatherapy expert, Joe Kellett. Welcome back to the show, Jo. Thank you for having me. It's lovely to have you back because I do love doing the essential oils because, you know, I absolutely love them, got into them. So today we're speaking about aiding sleep yes. because lots of people out there, they're not absolutely. getting a good night's yeah. sleep. So what yeah. are your tips? And top okay, tips? well, it, everybody knows what they should really do for a good night's sleep. But um, I pulled up s some statistics before coming. It's a yeah. um, research I found in 2016 from a report in 2016. 63% of people are unhappy with their sleep. Wow. You know, it's a really it's high a lot, figure. Yeah. And only 8% of people say they wake feeling refreshed. Oh, that's So it, it's really low. Yeah. Um, anxiety plays quite a key factor. I think mm. people sort of get themselves into a um, panic and, and they worry about not being able to sleep. And then that yeah, obviously yeah. means that Make they sure can't sleep. Just... Yeah. And women are more likely to suffer from bad sleep than men, supposedly. Right. So at Tisserand, we have a, a range of um, uh, oils and we, our kit is called the Sleep Better Kit. So obviously, 
as I said at the beginning, we all know what we should do to have a good night's sleep. Mm -hmm. Turn off your phone for at least an hour before you go to bed. Yeah. You know, make your bedroom a, a sanctuary, somewhere that you can you know, go to and it's quiet and peaceful. And as much as possible, that is only going to help your sleep. Okay. So um, we have the kit called the Sleep Better range, and there are three oils in the kit that are highlighted. So I've brought those along this okay. evening for us to have a little play it's with. Good. So let's have a little go. This first one is jasmine, um, beautiful jasmine essential oil. Jasmine is actually my favourite oh, smell. Well, there we go. I love and it. it's not going to come out the bottle. <laughs> This is this because it's a bit thicker than the, it's the, very yeah, thick. Because I noticed it's that because sometimes I'm there with my diffuse and it's like, come on! <laughs> but the more you shake yeah. it, the, the no, <laughs> doesn't yeah, come just out. be patient. You just so have it's to very, wait. very thick. Oh, yeah, you, you can, can see, see yeah. and it's it's you know it's a beautiful colour. Oh, I love that. Oh, my it God. is beautiful. What, how does it make flowers. you feel? Happy because it brings up a lot of yes, memories. Because yes, I used to have yes. these flowers so in my garden. Yeah, it has the um, capabilities of making us feel quite uplifted, quite euphoric, but also very sort of peaceful and calm as well. That's then nice. we have sandalwood, which is also probably quite stubborn to come out of the bottle. <laughs> so jasmine is from the flowers, sandalwood obviously from yeah. the wood. It's a sign of a good quality oil if it's not coming yeah, out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. So that is also going to sit quite heavy on yeah. the smell strip for us. Yeah, that's nice. It's kind of a more kind of masculine. There, there, kind it, of it does smell. have a masculine mm. sort of leaning to it, yeah. but it doesn't. It's it doesn't have to be. Yeah. you know, just for men. Mm -hmm. um, it, uh, smell them together, for example, yeah. you know, put them together. Is this what the blend is with for the sleep? Yeah, so the Sleep Better range has yeah, these two, lovely. and then of course, lavender, yeah. which is the classic sleep uh, sedative oil. One of my favourites as well. Well, there you go. I use I lavender every free. evening. Fantastic. This comes out a lot easier yeah. than the bottle. <laughs> There's lots of lavender flowers around this way. <laughs> Yeah, this one is beautiful. So these three together, will yeah. So those we'll three are those three are, are in the are in the um, the products. Yeah. But um, there are other oils in there as well. And mm. then we have the range of the kit. And what we sort of came up with, and what we've sort of adv uh, advised, is that you know for some people they can't get off to sleep. Yeah. For some people they wake in the night. So if you have a, a ritual, if you do something, mm. and you you you've got to give it time. You've got to give yourself a bit of time to. Um, you know, make the changes. And yeah. I think that can be very, you know, empowering for you. If you, you're going to make these changes, make these decisions and try and help yourself get a better night's sleep. Yeah. So what we um, suggest is that you start with a bath. Yeah. Have a good bath before you go to bed, turn your phone off, get everything done and give yourself a good sort of 40 minute lead up in sort of going to bed. Mm -hmm. So you start with the bath oil. And then after the bath, you can use the um, massage and body oil. And we recommend that you um, massage from your feet up your body and, and, you know, take some time, sort of yeah. really sort of glide the oil into your body and finish by taking some into your hands and placing it over your face. Because if you do that, you're going to get a really good sense of the okay. smell and you can really inhale the lovely aroma. Sounds lovely. It's making me sleepy already. Okay. <laughs> to do the rest of the show joe <laughs> and then <laughs> and then you um and then we have the pillow mist mm -hmm. so spray your pillow just before you get into bed yeah. um and then you know curl up cuddle up and you're yeah. you know ready for bed it's so nice it's actually just taking care of yourself a bit of extra time it's just just to, taking some care people of yourself are so busy and they don't stop yep, to do anything absolutely. for themselves just take take your time put yeah. us put aside a little extra time it's really worth it you know yeah. sleep is such an important thing our bodies are so amazing you know we have that ability to regenerate recoup repair yeah. while we're asleep and you know if you could have good fulfilling sleep you're going to feel so much better yeah, so definitely. much better and then if you if you're a person who wakes in the night so you're sort of you're struggling you, you go off okay mm -hmm. but then you wake up and you're awake for two or three hours and your mind yeah. starts to race so that way, what would we, we would suggest is we have um, a diffuser oil. So you remember last time when I was in, we did yeah. the diffuser. Mm -hmm. um, so you can use your own oils in there, but we've got one that's ready-made. It's um, the Sleep Better diffuser oil. So you would put um, your drops in there and put it on in your bedroom, shut the door and leave it for about 20 minutes. Okay. So that when you come back in, turn the diffuser off and the whole room is, you know, aromatically yeah. smelly for you <laughs> is um, it okay to keep the diffuser on while you're sleeping yeah though, well? well i would turn it off yeah, no so okay. so put it on 20 minutes or so before you go to bed right, okay turn it off 
as you get into bed. So, okay. But you know, you've, you've prepared the room. <laughs> I keep it on normally. Whoops, another mistake that I've been making. <laughs> no, that's fine, that's fine. Yeah. But it's probably best to turn it off yeah. before you go to okay. sleep. All right. um, and then again, use the massage oil and massage. Mm. Um, if you don't want to do your whole body, do your upper chest, do around yeah. your neck and shoulders. And again, you know, spend a little bit of time sort of holding your hands over your face and inhaling mm -hmm. the aromas and just kind of wind yourself down and then get into bed. Yeah. And then the last little tip is our rollerball, mm -hmm. which these are great. These are really easy to use. We've got lots of different um, rollerballs. This one is the sleep better one. So if you wake in the night, this is your this is what you need to reach for. Yeah. So keep it by your bedside table, somewhere you can reach for that. You know, you don't have to put the lights on. You don't have mm -hmm. to be awake. And literally, just roll it on, oh, and perfect. you know, and use it. Yeah. And hopefully that's enough for you to, again, <laughs> again, sort of, you know, smell the oils, yes, breathe, relax, mm. and sort of, you know, take a moment that way. Yeah. Jo, what is it about essential oils that are so, so good for us? Well, they do, they do so much by um, evoking, as you said, sort of memories and mm. feelings. So particularly when we're smelling them, we're going to be getting a sense of what they do sort of emotionally and, and for your well-being. Yeah. Um, and, but you've also got the opportunity here to massage them. So you're going to yeah, be yeah. massaging them onto your body, relaxing your body and, and taking the oils into the body. Mm -hmm. and, the, and they're working more physiologically, so more okay. working more on a physical level. Okay. And Joe, just a question. If you just, for example, start off with the, the lavender or salad yeah. oil you have at the moment, are you supposed to mix it with a, some yes. something first before you massage? Yes. yes. Don't put mm. the don't put the oils neat onto your skin. You will, if you want to use them for massage, you need to dilute them into a vegetable oil. So something okay. like sunflower, um, sweet almond oil. I mean, even olive oil if that's what you have. Okay. And you take a teaspoon, five milliliters of base mm. oil, and one drop of essential oil, and oh. that's a really sort of safe blend. <clears throat> and then you can massage that. So if you've just got lavender, because yeah. lavender is great for sleep. Um, so you can massage that and you can then just put a drop of lavender on your pillow before okay. you go to bed. Yeah. You know, that's another really nice way. Lovely. So you don't need to dilute it then. You can just put one drop yeah, onto on, your on pillow. pillow. Lovely. Jo, thank you so much. Not at all. Not at I all. I can't wait for your next appearance. Thank you very much. about another subject. Yes, definitely. So we'll see you again very soon. Lovely. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Okay, everybody. So now it's time to go to Dr. Audrey Tang discussing some psychological issues that could be keeping you up at night and what you can do about them. Welcome to the show, Audrey. Thanks for having me, Chrissy. So can you tell us about some of the psychological effects um, of a person not getting a good night's sleep and also actually what causes it, vice versa as well? Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's start with the causes, first of all. Mm. Sometimes it can be due to psychological reasons. Stress is a huge cause of insomnia. Yeah. Um, but also things like if we have been habitually waking up at a certain time, maybe we've just had a newborn or yeah. something like that, or maybe you've had to go to the toilet quite a lot in the middle of the night. You, we become associated with waking up at that particular time, which mm. means that we somehow just wake ourselves up at that time to do whatever it is we yeah. thought we needed to do. Um, silly things can also affect us. For example, it's getting a little bit warmer nowadays. So if we're too hot, that can keep us awake at night. Mm. But then again, if we open the window and we suffer from hay fever, that's yeah, all yeah. started. <laughs> so it's you true. might also be really uncomfortable. Um, chronic pain can also keep mm. us up. That can be a real problem. And sometimes our routines during the day may not help us sleep at night. So if, for example, you're getting a lot of naps during the day, it may affect your sleeping later on. It's why people who do shift work, people who are jet lagged, they mm. can sometimes struggle because they're used to a certain pattern and yeah, then having to sure. change it is a problem. And then worrying about it makes it even worse. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, lack of sleep can have a few knock-on effects. First of all, it does make us less able to concentrate. Uh, we may get a little bit more irritable and those things can then affect our relationships with other people. Yeah. We may have snapped at someone, we didn't mean to do it, but that's already damaged that mm -hmm. particular relationship. Psychological research has also shown that whilst a lack of sleep, and this is mainly aimed at students, whilst lack of sleep won't necessarily affect academic written performance, it actually has an effect on presentation and spoken performance. Okay. So they yeah. studied um, architecture students who had to write an exam, but also had to deliver a piece on their projects. And they found that if they hadn't slept, they didn't actually affect their grade in their written exam, but their performance wasn't as good as 
previous performances have been okay. when people have had sleep. So yeah. those things can, can cause us a lot of issues. Um, there's a few things we can do to help ourselves as well, because unfortunately, if we bring our phones to the bedroom, and of course now we write memos on our phones, we may read on our phones, we're on social media on our phones, the blue light is not a friendly light mm -hmm. to help us sleep. So one thing we can do is maybe try and wind down off our phones before we go to bed, set your alarm by all means, but then maybe read a paper book rather than yeah. having your phone in. And if you, like me, you wake up in the middle of the night with this amazing idea, um, <laughs> write it down yeah, with a pen yeah. and paper as opposed to writing it on your phone. Because again, not only will the light wake you up more than perhaps you want it to, but the very act of doing that, you might suddenly think, I'll just scroll yeah, it's true. social media. I do tend to write notes on my phone if I wake up and I'm like, or oh, I can't sleep and I try to start. Yes. I do. I tend to, I should keep a notebook by my bedside. It, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't yeah. hurt. And it's similarly, have that bedtime routine. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, um, when I say wind down, you may feel, well, I've got so much to do. Well, maybe do some things which don't take as much active brain power because if we're really excited about something and adrenaline's going, yeah. it's really difficult to mm -hmm. get to sleep. Um, for some people, exercise helps. For other people, it fires them up. So be <laughs> mindful of what suits you. Um, but things like having that routine where you maybe have a cup of chamomile tea or a hot milk or something mm -hmm. like that, and then you already get into that process of winding down. If you have to prepare something for tomorrow, maybe prepare your lunch for the next day or get your clothes out for the next day. That way you're also prepared, yeah. but you're not doing anything which has made your brain get, yeah. exactly, get yeah. really excited. So we can look after ourselves a little bit. We can be mindful of what works. But also, remember, you are the expert on your body. There are some people who just sleep for four hours a night and they're absolutely fine the mm. next day. I don't recommend that. But if it works for you, just be aware we're not sure about the long term effects of that yeah, yet. So, that's true. But if it works for you and then you find napping during the day helps, great. Do it in that way if your career allows you to do that. Mm -hmm. But know what suits you. Try things. Listen to what people have to say but then think about it and think, well, actually I had a go at that, warm milk suits me, but exercise doesn't, that's absolutely fine. You yeah. are the expert on your body. Wonderful, Audrey, thank you, my darling. Absolute pleasure. And we'll see you again next time. Yes. Thank you. Well, everyone, after the break, actually, you're not going anywhere, are you? Because you're going to try our cake of the I week. I am, it looks amazing. It looks amazing, so she will not leave until she's tried this cake. <laughs> right. yes, so, yes. but after the break. I've asked. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We do have our news correspondent Helena Shard with this week's A Helping of Happy, which of course brings you positive news and also featuring our lovely rainbow cake, which is courtesy of Vida Bakery. And we're also going to feature our visit to the Brixton Soup Kitchen. But first, is this true or false? Humans spend a third of their life sleeping. Find out the answer after this. Welcome back to today's Chrissy B Show, everybody. So before the break, we asked if this was true or false. Humans spend a third of their life sleeping. The answer is true. This obviously differs depending on the age of the human, but on average, it's around a third, which actually is quite a lot when you think about it, isn't it, Helena? It is. Wow, what a waste of time. <laughs> not really, no, it's not. It's not a waste. We need don't it, don't we? we? I mean, it's the best dress you can get, isn't it? It is, yes. Absolutely. And, and now we have Helping of Happy with the lovely Helena Shard. Positive much. news. For Absolutely. Because sleep eludes so many people, so yes. it's good to be discussing it's positive stories. Absolutely. So I'm going to begin with Ariana Huffington, who is a fabulous woman. She's actually from Cyprus. Mm -hmm. um, she's a found, the founder of Huffington Post, that's now been taken over by AOL. But she's a real champion about sleep, and she has a story. Mm -hmm. um, she had severe insomnia and a complete wake up call when she just literally passed out with exhaustion and broke her cheekbone. Oh. Um, then from that moment she went for it and she's been advising so many people and how to succeed in business and it's a simple thing which is to get more sleep mm -hmm. um, and why I like her it's the simplicity and she's actually I mean Elon Elon Musk who's the um, tech entrepreneur is getting in trouble at the moment um, online and she's been advising him and mm -hmm. it's really because he works on that like 120 hours a week 
And even on his 47th birthday, he was working the oh, whole time. Dear. So he didn't see his family, he didn't see his children. Um, and she's just saying that you just can't solve problems mm. by sleeping, um, by, sorry, mm. by staying awake. You just have to, you can't keep working longer hours. Mm. Um, so to make good de decisions and achieving, you know, world-changing ambitions, you've just got to do yeah. that simple thing. Um, and she also talks about digifrenia, um, you know, which is, Digifrenia, if you think about digital, okay. which I think a lot of people are addicted to yes, their phones yes. and their tablets and everything. We discussed that yeah. a little bit with Audrey before. And, the, yeah. and again, her simple thing about getting a good night's sleep is what she trained herself to do, you know, an hour before bed, make it a special time, you, you know, have sp something that's special the third time to wear. we're hearing that, that today, people, so it's very important. Oh, it's very, very yes. important. Yes. I think it's the simplicity that yeah. works. And, you know, read a book if you want to read a book. Mm -hmm. Everything, you know, it's something completely unrelated to work. Yes. Um, and, Absolutely. you know, phones out. I mean, there's very simple things that she talks about, mm. but it absolutely works. And myself as well, I, I got myself into a bit of a state because I was working one job during the day. I had a photography exhibition which was going on and on, which was here and abroad. And at night I was digit, you know, doing my photos, photo editing and getting it ready. So going like the whole night and then uh, keeping working. And it, it does, you just basically I break can't down. physically do that. Once I, I need can't to sleep, anymore. That's it. I can't anymore, I have to say. Yeah. Um, but now it's really, really good. But I had to reconnect mm. and get more sleep. Uh, moving now on to Sarah Plater, and something very simple, she spent a lot of money on sleep things to try and help her sleep because she had chronic insomnia, and this was something like 20, 15 years ago, something like that. But some, she went on holiday and didn't decided not to think about it because she got into such a rut thinking, about, I've mm. got to sleep, I've got to sleep, what can I do? Um, and she then drifted off thinking about holiday and got the best, her holiday got the best night's sleep. So it was about refocusing her thoughts, okay. mm. um, which worked for her and now she's absolutely fine. Now there is an upside to insom insomnia. Um, I don't know if, if you can call it an upside <laughs> okay. in a funny kind of way. <laughs> Let's be um, positive. <laughs> Maybe not that positive. Sleep but... <laughs> deprivation can aid creativity. Mm. And I think on a short term that, yeah. basis, I yeah. think can be good. Um, and I know there's a couple of musicians, Matt Berry explained how he wrote his new, one of his albums, not his new album, um, during nocturnal sessions and did really well. And he, stre he was stressed that he was <coughs> wasting so much time trying yeah. to sleep. So he thought, right, I'm just gonna do my music. And also Dave Bailey from Glass Animals owes his career to insomnia. And he, start he only started writing um, when he couldn't sleep, when he was studying at mm. King's College. Uh, okay. quite a while ago. So there are yeah. upsides as well. But talking about creativity, Helena, we have to it's introduce our cake. Yes. We have our beautiful rainbow cake. Now this is from uh, Vida Bakery and everything they do is 100% vegan and gluten free. And this is their best seller actually. It's got six layers of coloured vanilla sponge. It's we can't wait beautiful. to try it. And I know there's a couple of ladies that want to join us, <laughs> by the way. Should we, we call them in? Where are the ladies that want to have yeah, some cake? It's time for cake, everybody. Everybody. So thank Ooh, you very yes. much to the cake. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 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 To be We're here. here. We're here. Now, I thought okay. you two had left, but obviously they uh, haven't because we have We're so happy cake. to see you. So shall we yes. try? So much to try. <laughs> Helena, thank you very much for the news. That's, that was great. Mm. But now it's time for okay. cake. So six layers, everybody. This is just it's amazing. It's enormous, actually. I can't, oh, it's it. incredible. I can't wait to see what's in there. Okay, who wants, who wants to go first? And it's all those colours. so beautiful. I know. Oh, I just shoved my finger in it. Okay, who's first? Uh, again, oh okay, <laughs> let's put. Oh, Look at that. oh my gosh. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I'll send it. So you're first then, are you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> ready? There we go, my love. Oh, it's so it's so pretty. The way the colour is absolutely beautiful. beautiful. Oops, it's a bit too thin. I think it's going right. to come right. no, no, oh, 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 so thank you once again to mm. Vida Bakery for that this lovely beautiful. cake. Thank you, Vida Bakery. That, that is, is stunning. Really light, oh, wow. really <laughs> flavoursome. It's super fluffy. Mm. I love it. Okay, That's I need to taste amazing. it as well, people. I'm absolutely beautiful. Okay, let me turn it around so you guys can see. Mm. Mm. Really moist. There we go. Do all the layers have a different mm. flavour? What do you think, girls? 
beautiful. Okay. Like I am mm. going to taste it in just a second because we do have more coming well. up. Mm. And this is Those are okay. just having a conversation on their own. So let me tell you, we'll, we'll tell you what's actually coming up. And one Hello, hi, from here. <laughs> right, so while we're enjoying this lovely cake, mm. it's time now to show you our visit to the Brixton Soup Kitchen to see the great work they're doing to help homeless people who, of course, spend many a sleepless night on the street. Since I was about 11 years old, I used to give to the homeless. My parents, I come from a Caribbean background, and especially on a Sunday, they're cooking, like there's 35 people in the house, and there's only two or three. So what I used to do is I used to contain food before I used to go to school. Um, and I literally used to give to seven homeless people in Brixton while I was on my way to school. And I've done that for like a year, a year, two years. And then um, I literally, that's always been on my mind, always that's something I wanted to do. It's not until I finished university is when I was like, do you know what? I actually want to start my own soup kitchen. And um, literally we just started off just by giving clothes, um, giving hot tea, and it literally just grew and grew and grew um, to where we are now. So now we provide hot meals, hot drinks um, for, the, for, the, um, for the homeless, needy, less fortunate, um, elderly. There's a lot of people at home lonely, um, people suffer from mental health. You know, so our thing is just not just about feeding homeless people, but it's also about helping our volunteers as well. So a lot of our volunteers uh, might be suffering through mental health, um, not at work, loneliness. Um, so our thing is about helping everyone. I'm Sarah. I met Solomon recently and heard his story and about the, the Brixton Soup Kitchen and the amazing work that's going on here. I work with men and women to help them overcome and unravel challenges they've had in their life and help them set goals and move forward. The reason I got into coaching was because I grew up in the 70s. It was a very difficult time economically. My parents worked really, really hard, but it was a struggle. And there was a lot of conflict and tension in the household, which meant that I spent a lot of time with friends, trying to deal with and processing all the tension that was going on. So that led me to be born, I guess, or even develop a feeling of to sort of seize every moment that you can and to make the best of every opportunity in life. So one of the main reasons why we're trying to raise £100,000 is no staff you see has been paid. Everybody takes their time out to support me on my journeys of supporting people, supporting homeless people. And one of the things is, is I want to encourage just like what the government is doing to encourage people to get back into work i want to encourage people to get back into work as well by working for the bricks and soup kitchen you can have a terrible setback in life but actually you can learn from it and actually use that as a badge of honor as a strength to move you forward and apply to your life in the future it doesn't always have to be that way no matter how bad it got when I was being locked up in rooms and not allowed to go out, I thought, what am I going to do with my life? So do you know what I did? Every day I just looked in the mirror or I just told myself one good thing about myself. I kept saying, you're worthy, you're deserving. And I don't know whether there's just one good thing you can find about yourself, more than one. You've got a great supporting environment here. One of the things I wanted to do is to also have a food bank um, implemented in, a clothes bank implemented in you know, creating different services all in one building. So we do counselling, job search, CV building, covering letters. We work with people coming from out of, in and out of prison. We work with people who just want to volunteer. We work with schools, colleges, universities. Um, a lot of people who want to learn about giving back and about learning a bit more about um, social responsibilities. We work with corporates. So we do corporate days, we do away days, we do a lot of team building. So there's a lot of things that we do at Bricks and Soup Kitchen than just giving um, food to the homeless. You know, it develops every day. You know, you can see the work that we're doing is all passionate. This is something that we enjoy doing, this is something that we love doing, but we need, need your support. So thank you very much to everyone there at Brixton Soup Kitchen. So as you can see, I'm still eating my cake. It's absolutely lovely. 
But after the break, we have on Dr. Rob Hicks who will be giving us his top tips on how to get a good night's sleep. And also beauty expert Sunny Summer will be showing us a few tricks to hide a tired face. But first, what percentage of the population are thought to be sleepwalkers? Is it A, 5%, B, 15% or C, 30%? Find out the answer after this break. Hi, I'm Chrissy B, host of the UK's only TV programme dedicated to mental health and well-being, The Chrissy B Show, which airs on my TV Sky 191 every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Follow our social media on YouTube, Instagram and Twitter at Chrissy B Show and our Facebook page, The Chrissy B Show. For more information, visit chrissybshow.tv. Welcome back to today's Chrissy B Show, everybody, where we're aiming to help you get a better night's sleep. So before the break, we asked you what percentage of the population are thought to be sleepwalkers? Is it A, 5%, B, 15% or C, 30%? The answer is B, 15%. And just to let you know, it's a myth that you shouldn't wake someone up who is sleepwalking. Well, now it's time to go to Dr. Rob Hicks for his advice on getting a good night's sleep. Hello and welcome to Doctor's Orders here at the Chrissy B Show. I'm Dr. Rob Hicks. Today we're going to talk about sleep. Now we all know how important a good night's sleep is. Sleep helps our, our body and mind relax. During sleep we create memories and our body goes through a process of repair, preparing us for the following day so that we can function well. On average, as adults, we need about eight hours sleep a night. Now that does vary from person to person. One in three of us, however, suffer sleep problems on a regular basis. And we all know how that feels when you don't get a good night's sleep. I mean, the following day, you feel tired, your concentration isn't very good, you don't perform as well, your reaction times are slowed, and that, of course, puts people at risk of accidents. So when we're trying to solve the problem of poor sleep, it's ideal to try and identify what's causing it in the first place. So it might be something as simple as the environment not being a good for sleep. So maybe the room, the bedroom is too hot or too cold. Maybe it's not dark enough. Maybe it's too noisy. Or maybe the bed just isn't comfortable enough. It might be that you have a medical condition like arthritis that's causing pain that keeps you awake at night. Or maybe you've got a breathing problem that wakes you up or you may have an infection. I know when I've had a cough or a cold infection, often I'm coughing during the night and that certainly disrupts my sleep and leaves me feeling very tired the following day. It might be that you've used stimulants like caffeine or nicotine, or maybe you're taking a medication and one of the side effects of that medication is to disturb sleep. So if that might be the case, you know, have a look at the information leaflet that comes with the medication. And quite often, it's actually an emotional problem that's disturbing somebody's sleep. It's because of anxiety or stress or even depression. So when we're helping somebody to overcome their sleep problems, we try and identify what the problem is, but we do something called sleep hygiene. These are techniques and tips to help us try and get a good night's sleep, which after all is what we all desire. So one of the things is to try and go to bed at the same time each night and wake up at the same time each morning. And do that not only on work days, but also on your days off as well, so that your body gets into a routine about knowing when it's time for bed and knowing when it's time to wake up. Obviously avoid stimulants like, like caffeine before you go to bed. And exercise actually is very good for helping us to get a good night's sleep, but do it during the day. Don't do it close to bedtime, because if you exercise too close to bedtime, you may find it difficult to go off to sleep. Try and make sure that your room is comfortable for sleep so that it's dark enough, it's quiet enough, the temperature is right and your bed is comfortable. If it's because you know, it's too light, then think about wearing an eye mask. If it's because your bed is, bedroom is too noisy, then think about wearing some earplugs. Then of course, there are other things that you can do to help 
stop those worries and anxieties that often are the reason why somebody can't go off to sleep because the moment their head hits the pillow, these things are just going round and round in their mind. Make a list of the things that are worrying you or the things that you have to do the following day. Make that list on a piece of paper, on your smartphone, on your, on your tablet, but do that in a room other than the bedroom and then leave the list outside of the bedroom. That way, when you do go into the bedroom, you've taken care of that, you've put that to bed, so to speak, so you're prepared for sleep. You're not gonna be worrying about that anymore. And the other important thing is no electronics in the bedroom. No phones, no computers, no TVs, because that will interfere with, with sleep. It won't allow you to relax into proper sleep. And remember, do keep the bedroom for sleep and for sex and nothing else. Now, if you have a problem with sleep or you know somebody who's having problems with sleep, then do ask your doctor for some help and advice so that you can overcome that problem and get a jolly good night's sleep. And that's Doctor's Orders. Thank you very much there to Dr. Rob Hicks. So now it's time to go to Sammy Sorma, our beauty expert, for her tips on how to hide a tired face. Hi everyone, my name is Sunny and I am the resident makeup artist here at the Chrissy B Show. So today I am here to talk about how to trick yourself and others to thinking that you are wide awake and you hadn't really had a sleepless night at all. So for me, at least personally, it's actually really important to trick yourself first before you can get other people to believe it. So I like to start with a little face massage. It kind of wakes me up really well and it gets the blood flowing because I don't know about you, but at least for me, I seem to look terribly pale if I've had a sleepless night. So I prefer, you could use a face cream, I prefer oils because you get a little bit more slip out of the oil. So this one has a bit of shimmer, so it'll show up a little bit better here on camera. So what I like to do is I warm up the oil on my hands and you start off on your neck. You kind of really push everything up and then on your face, try and kind of go from center to the side, center to the side. And then around your eyes, you can really press on pressure points, but really work, work the oil into your skin. And if you have time, let it sink in properly for like five or 10 minutes before doing anything else. But the more you can get the blood flowing, the better. Sometimes if I can bear it, I even um, kind of splash my face with cold water. But to be honest, most of the time I can't, I can't face that. Now, the next step would be foundation. I tend to skip foundation. I go for a much lighter, BB cream on like very tired mornings because you don't need to be so specific about getting it all even and nice. So you can kind of just basically more or less slap it on. <laughs> so you can kind of on top of the very well moisturized face, you can just very quickly put it on. It evens out the skin tone and it gives you a little bit of a healthy glow, but you don't have to worry about, you know, blending really well around your jawline or anything like that at all. Blush is probably my most important step. And on tired mornings, it's actually really good to go for something very, very bright. So really wake yourself up and I, like when you're applying blush, think of the apples of your cheeks. So the apples of your cheeks are where when you smile, they're the highest point of your cheek. So kind of think of this area and then upwards. So if I put like, let's say, I, I personally love this very, very um, bright pink. So if I put that on, I put most of the color on the apple of the cheek and then I brush it upwards. Kind of, again, gives you that same kind of facelift and it gives that pop of color on your face that you kind of really probably need. And I do say that there's extra points for bronzer. So if, <laughs> if you can bear another step, bronzer is really, really great. But when you're using bronzer on a tired uh, morning, go for something that's very close 
to your own skin tone. So don't go for anything that's too dark. It is literally your skin but a shade, maybe too darker, I would say, um, because you don't want to be caught with kind of like not very well blended stripes around the face or under the jawline or anything like that. So you really want to kind of just add a little bit of color and a little bit of warmth to your face. Now, I would love for everyone to be able to do this on a tired morning. If you're not competent with eyelash curlers, these little bad boys, then don't attempt it. But if you are competent with them, it makes a massive difference. For me, definitely. So a very good trick when you are using an eyelash curler is actually to put your lashes in between. I'm not gonna put my lashes now in between. I'm just gonna show you how to do it. Put your lashes in between and then rest the curler on your eyelid and kind of move it up. I know it looks a little bit weird, but it's a lot more gentle on your lashes than just clamping them. And if you're tired, let's face it, you might hurt yourself a little bit. But that really, really opens up your eyes. And I don't know if you're like me, but I have trouble keeping my eyes open when I'm tired. So it makes it appear like you're a lot more awake. And obviously, lashings of mascara. Now, I am actually, coincidentally, quite tired today. Uh, I'm a little bit ill, so I didn't have a good night's sleep. And my cat had a little party last night. So what I tend to do as well is I tend to wear darker eyeshadow when I'm tired because that kind of, to me at least, hides the fact that I've got slightly darker under eyes. So there's a little bit more intensity, but you do have to feel quite competent with doing eye makeup on, on days like that. So if you're not feeling confident, leave it with the eyelash curlers and mascara, and then your eyes will be wide, wide open. So last but not least is lips. Now, in order to get lipstick to look nice, we all know that you have to be quite precise. So leave the bright reds, leave the bright pinks, even though you might think it's a good idea to kind of go for the really bright colors, because that's gonna require a lot of precision and a lot of concentration to get it to look nice. I tend to go for sheer lipsticks, better yet for lip gloss. So lip gloss, especially lip gloss that has a little bit of sparkle in it, kind of in a neutral tone, really draws the eye in and because there's sparkle it also kind of catches the light so it will attract um, it will attract whoever you're talking to they're going to look at your smile they're going to look at what you're saying they won't necessarily pay attention to the fact that you're so <laughs> feeling a little bit tired now I, we would all love to hear your tips and tricks so please let the show know if you've got great um, great ideas on how to look a little bit less tired and i am going to be back next time with some more tips thanks bye Thank you very much to Sunny there. So after the break, we go to Hannah Richards' kitchen for a recipe that helps to reduce anxiety and aid better sleep. And we also have another workout with Natalia Katoska because exercise also helps sleep. But first, is this true or false? Napping makes it hard to sleep at night. Find out the answer after this break. Welcome back to today's Chrissy B Show, everybody, where our aim today is to help you get a better night's sleep. So before the break, we asked you if this was true or false. Napping makes it hard to sleep at night. This is actually false. According to experts, a quick afternoon rest won't disrupt your ability to go to bed. In fact, our internal clocks are programmed to make us sleepy in the afternoon. However, a short 20 minute nap is best, so don't enter a deeper stage of sleep as this will only make you tired later in the day. So now it's time to head off to Hannah Rich's kitchen for a recipe that helps to reduce anxiety and aid better sleep. 
my name's Hannah and today I'm going to teach you how to cook some foods that are going to help reduce your anxiety levels. You may or may not have heard that actually what we eat can have an effect on how we feel and it's certainly true. So today I'm going to show you some how to make some turkey burgers and some sweet potato wedges. Take your sweet potatoes and we're just going to start by peeling them. We're going to then parboil your sweet potatoes and then we're going to uh, put them in the oven with some spices, some garlic, some chilli. So we want to sort of try and create as much of a wedge as possible. So, you know, sweet potatoes come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, so you've got to sort of be creative. So I would chop them into, uh, into a sort of a cylindrical shape. Okay, so the sweet potatoes are in the pan. We're gonna move on to the turkey burgers. So I've got two types of turkey mince. One is the breast and one is the thigh. The breast mince has got a little less fat in it and that's why I've brought the thigh mince because fat is always good when you're doing burgers because it keeps it all together. And I'm just going to mush them together, mixing them up. So then for a little bit of um, taste, we're going to take some garlic cloves, squeeze them in your presser. Now I'm gonna use some coconut oil to cook, uh, just because these um, turkey burgers are gonna take a little time. And then I'm gonna take an onion and just chop it down as finely as you can and just break it, all the little bits up as well. Okay, so add into the, um, Add into the pan your onions and your garlic. So whilst we're there, I'm going to add um, a chili. We're just gonna go back to our sweet potatoes. Drizzle some olive oil over them. Some sea salt. Some turmeric. And a little bit of rosemary. And then we're just going to add some of our spicy mix. So there are your um, uh, spicy wedges. We're just gonna put them in the oven at 180 degrees for about 25 minutes. I'm gonna check them after 25 minutes or maybe a little bit before because everyone's oven's a little different, but we want them roasted, we want them, we want them crispy. We're going to add a little bit of flour onto our cooking board. We're gonna add a little bit of salt into the turkey burger. And we're gonna take a handful, give it a bit of a baste into the flour and into the pan. So the sweet potatoes are ready. They've been in for 25 minutes and we're gonna take them out. Thank you very much to Hannah there. So according to sleep.org, as little as 10 minutes of aerobic exercise such as walking or cycling can dramatically improve the quality of your nighttime sleep, especially when done on a regular basis. What's more, exercisers may reduce their risk for developing troublesome sleep disorders such as sleep apnea and restless leg syndrome. So on that note, here's our fitness expert Natalia Kotoska with three exercises that you can do outdoors to get an effective 10 minute workout. Hey guys, it's me Natalia Kotowska, your fitness expert and can do it with Nat. And today we're outdoor in the park. So I'm sure that every one of you can find their own park where you can exercise. No equipment needed, all you need is trainers, some outfits and we can keep going. First exercise I have for you, it's very simple. We're gonna go upstairs and downstairs as fast as you can for a whole minute. So you wanna add that speed, you wanna add that high knees, you wanna have that pace going for one minute only. You go up the stairs, turn down the stairs. One minute all the time, non-stop. 
have that nice little cardio going. That will be your first one, 60 seconds. Then take some little break, maybe 15 up to 30 seconds break. You're gonna go for the next one. We're gonna go for air squats. We're gonna keep jumping on the stairs, both feet on. So we jumping, jumping, jumping. Turn and jump down, hop, keep going. Up. Go as low as you can for one minute again. Down the stairs, down the stairs. That's another minute. Once you complete that, take another break. 15, 30 seconds, no longer than that. And the very last one, you're gonna keep switching legs. As fast as you can, same thing. And keep breathing all the time. Another minute, that gives you three minutes. You can repeat that three times at least, so you have nice 10 minutes of nice cardio circuit. And that gives you great exercise outside in this lovely park. Thank you so much for today, guys, and I will see you next time. Thank you very much to Natalia there. So we are reaching the end of today's program, and I really hope that you uh, enjoyed today's show because we did give you quite a few different varied hints and tips on how to get a better night's sleep. But just something that I would like to touch on as well because sometimes the issue isn't, isn't a lack of exercise or nutrition. Maybe you are exercising, maybe you are eating well, maybe you're using essential oils as well, and still you are finding it difficult to sleep. So this could point to a deeper problem. You know, I mean, it's great to have, um, you know, the sleep hygiene things that, you know, not um, checking your phone just before you go to sleep and not watching TV just before, all those things, yes, they're very good to do. But if you see that you're doing those things, you're trying the exercise that we spoke about, all the other things, and still you're not getting a good night's sleep, it means that there's a, a deeper underlying issue. So in my case, when I had the mental health issues that I was going through, um, nighttime was very, very difficult for me. I hated it when it started to get dark. I would get feel more afraid. I would be afraid to go to bed because that's normally when the panic attacks would start. And I didn't like turning the light off. I wanted to keep the TV on and everything because I felt more comfortable, I felt safer. So the, the reason I wasn't getting a good night's sleep was because of the problems that I was going through. Once I'd addressed those issues, once I got help for those issues, going to sleep was not a problem for me anymore. So have, have, a, you know, have a, a good look at yourself, your life, if there's something that's worrying you, if there's something from the past that you haven't addressed, something that could be way, way in the, at the back of your mind, but that thing could actually be keeping you awake at night. Maybe you feel guilty about something. You've done something wrong or you, you've done something to someone, maybe they don't even know about it, and it's there eating away at you. So you're not going to get a good night's sleep because you, you're not at peace. There's something in your conscience. There's something going over in your mind all the time. And you know what? Sometimes it's better to actually deal with those things in the case of maybe something that you feel guilty about. I, I, believe, I believe it's much, much better to actually confess speak to you have to speak to and get that thing out of your system even if you might get into trouble even if you might lose someone in your life because of something maybe that you've done I think it's much better to lose something or someone than to continue living with a heavy conscience or not feeling good inside of yourself I think that's the worst kind of feeling in the world to feel uncomfortable to feel agitated to feel with like a heavy conscience so it's better to just lose and do what you have to do and get that weight off your shoulders and you'll see even though okay there might be some consequences for doing that but I think the consequences are easier to deal with than living with those kind of feelings and emotions inside. In the case where it's something for example like you know you have a mental health issue or you have a problem at work again you need to get those things sorted out because once you do or at least you are on your way to sorting those things out you will already sleep better many times even if for example you you haven't solved the issue yet but the fact that you're actually doing something towards solving that issue that already gives you that boost that kind of thing well at least i'm doing something about it and i will get there that already will, will help you to get a better night's sleep i believe well everyone if anyone out there has a story that you would like to share on the program, please do get in touch. You can email us on info at chrissybshow.tv. You can also tweet or Instagram us at chrissybshow 
or leave a message on our Facebook page, The Chrissy B Show. And if you'd like to know more about my mental health journey, the things that I went through and overcame, you can visit my personal website, which is mylifeafterdepression.com. Till next time, bye-bye for now.